World Network, and it's a new week. So let's start our time together by just settling in and connecting. Just take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a second or two. And then as you release it, allow yourself to just relax. Relax your neck and your shoulders. Relax your jaw. Relax your hips. And let's take another deep breath in. Hold it. And just gently release your breath. Release any remaining tension. And let's bring ourselves present by placing our palms gently together and softly rubbing your fingers against your palms. Feel the sensation in your fingertips. Feel the sensation in your palms. And come present to your body right here, right now. Welcome. It's a new week. And I'm going to revisit a theme that I've spoken about a couple times before, but it's just up again and uh, in a new, nuanced way. And that is identity. And what I've recently come to be aware of is that the things that are pervasive or persistent patterns in our lives. Like maybe we have certain patterns in relationship or we have certain patterns with finances or we have certain patterns with, um, with abandonment or uh, rejection or uh, any number of different kinds of patterns that we might experience. Good morning, Brenda Riley, welcome. Uh, let's let's look at these patterns and how we really spend our lives trying to free ourselves from them or trying to fix them or fix ourselves. And what I just became aware of is how, good morning, Lisa Phillips, welcome. So glad you guys are here. Um, what I've recently become aware of is that these patterns are not, um, the way that we hold them is not necessarily as characteristics of our, our behavior, but we actually hold these patterns as identities. Uh, so welcome, Ruth. I'm so glad to see you. And maybe that's Dido. I hope that you're here as well. Thank you so much for being here. So let's just talk about this for a second. I'm going to try and do this without getting distracted. Um, what I noticed is that we take ownership of these patterns as a part of who we are. And what we get to look at is um, in the face of removing that pattern, there is a, a crisis of identity. Like, who will I be if I'm not this person that I've known to have gone through these cycles and patterns over my lifetime? So as an example, uh, personally, I had a history around money, just issues with money all over the place. And I've done all kinds of work on abundance and receiving and self-worth and all kinds of issues that are related to the, the idea of money. And what, what arose for me recently was recognizing that there was an identity that was tied into that whole dynamic that had to do with struggle. And uh, as I was focusing on abundance and the opportunity to be uh, having the experience of having everything I need and uh, everything I could want and, and the experience of really being taken care of, what I recognized is that there was a part of me that I was clinging to unconsciously, but clinging to this piece of identity that had to do with struggle. 
And who would I be if I were not struggling? Like it, it wasn't just a thing I did. It was really more of a fundamental sense of who I experienced myself to actually be. And so today's invitation is to take a look at the patterns in your life and start to notice how deeply entrenched the, the um, identification with those patterns is and how that might show up in terms of identity. And what I actually did quite recently, and I think it was profound, well, it was profound for me, I think it might be for you, is I actually imagine myself taking this identity as if it were a robe that was enrobing me and I removed it and in my meditation imagination I folded it very um, very methodically very consciously and I imagine myself actually offer making an offering of that part of myself or that identity that uh, that I was now willing to release. So I offered it to my higher self. You could offer it to whomever, but to say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to release this. And as a result, I'm ready to have the courage to step into the unknown and, and an expanded sense of self-awareness and self-experience i'm willing to move beyond the the limitation that i have enrobed myself with over um over the course of my life so uh i i think this is a really fascinating avenue to explore because our world is a projection our experience of our world is a projection we we experience the world through the lens of our of our perception of our history culturally familially individually and when we are moving into awakening what's required is releasing the limitations that have been self-imposed and you can imagine these limitations as shrouds that we've encased ourselves in and uh, by taking the deliberate action to consciously release those uh, garments those um, vestments we can we can actually free ourselves on a much deeper level because awakening is truly being able to be fully present without all the identification and, atta and attachment that we have not only to uh, the material world but to who we perceive ourselves to be. So it's a new approach, I think, to releasing old patterns and old identities and expanding into a, a larger sense of self that is undefined, that um, that offers possibility because it's in the definitions that we actually limit ourselves. It's in our, our self perception that we constrain our capabilities. So as we release the identification with our, our work or our roles, so our work in terms of how much money we make or how much um, even contribution we make 
or what we do uh, if as we release identification with our roles as uh, mother father sister brother uh, teacher healer seeker um, and as we release identification with all those things what expands and and what emerges is a truer expression of our our soul and our deep self so i think i think that kind of covers it for today just as a synopsis we're looking at how inadvertently we tend to cling to certain ideas about ourselves that may be generated from lifelong patterns and by deliberately and consciously releasing the identification with our patterns and uh, with these personas by by offering them up to our higher selves, we have the opportunity to expand into a broader and more authentic expression. So that's it for today. I want to say thank you so much for being here. So much love and compassion for you. And I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.